Welcome to BMW Bites, a taste of industry news. I'm your host, Mark Seifert, and today we're going to dive into the world of lead with our five and five. With the Flint water crisis, lead service line replacements, inventory plans, and varying regulations across the country, we're going to dive into five questions with Caitlin Wright to get you a quick hit on the world of lead. Ready? Let's go. Thanks, Caitlin, for coming down for our five and five. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how did you get involved with lead? So I've been in the water industry 10 years now, working with Baxter and Woodman, um, doing water and sewer design. And I can say that we've, we've known lead has been on the horizon here for some time. And I knew that this was going to impact the rest of my career, um, as well as all of the clients and communities that we work with. And I ultimately just wanted to help. Um, and to say it's Close to home is a little bit of an understatement. I have a lead water service line, so I was curious to see what was going to happen in the future. So there's a lot of misconception going on about lead. Where is it? How is it getting into the water? We know there's health effects and there's health impacts. Why are we talking about lead? What happened? Why are we here where we are today? That's a great question. So we do know that there's health effects with lead. Um, our children are most susceptible to kind of the damage that lead exposure can cause. Um, and so ultimately, we want to make sure that we are removing the sources of lead or reducing that risk of exposure. So we don't see lead typically in our source water. You're not going to see it in the lakes or the groundwater or the rivers. But where it does come into play is through the plumbing and fixtures. Um, our water distribution systems typically aren't made of lead pipe, so it's not something that the community has necessarily created that situation on. But when we get into kind of the piping that connects to that distribution system and gets into the houses, we were using lead piping for that kind of transportation of water. And through exposure, through contact with that lead piping, that's where water can pull the lead in, and that's when lead exposure can happen. Original lead laws came out during the Clean Water Act. They've changed a lot in the past few decades. Yeah. How are these lead regulations impacting utilities? How are they, how is every change and every little thing affecting utilities financially, operationally? What's going on? Um, for something that is so, um, I would say, focused for our water industry, the impact is kind of massive. There's um, a need to develop a water material inventory. So just the data management of that is really impactful and making sure that you've got all the materials of each service line identified. How are you storing that information? Um, you've got to develop a lead service line replacement plan if you've identified lead service lines. There's some council and village board discussions that need to happen absolutely, for that absolutely. piece. Um, there's a financial component there. Who's paying for this? When is it getting paid for? Um, where's the funding coming from? Um, there's an operational impact, right? There's changes in sampling procedures. So communities are going to have to ramp up on, on that and get familiar with those. And um, so there's, there's a lot of moving parts on this right now. Over the last couple of years, we've seen changes. The federal government has their uh, reg legislation. States such as Illinois have created a stricter legislation. Yeah. What's going on on the horizon? What do you see happening nationally? What do you see happening in Illinois? What is happening that is going to change these things for utilities? Well, I'll start big picture, but then I'm going to drill down into Illinois here briefly. Um, right now, every community across the United States is really focusing on that material inventory that's due October 16th of this year. Mm -hmm. And if they've identified lead, um, they're going to need to develop a replacement plan as well. In future years, there's the potential of needing to facilitate replacements that's governed underneath the lead and copper rule improvements. So if you've got an interest in that, let me know. Um, but otherwise, federally, it's really that material inventory and replacement plan. And then replacements would need to be started if your 90th percentile exceeded the action level at 15 parts per billion. But in Illinois, we're operating on a, a quicker deadline and a bit stricter role. So starting in 2027, communities are going to have to start replacing their lead service lines, regardless of sampling results. Wow. So we're, we are ramping up for replacements right now. Wow. That's a quick timeline. How can Baxter Women help? 
We're doing everything. We are helping communities with inventories. We're developing replacement plans. I'll go to city councils, village board meetings, educate your, your staff on kind of the upcoming changes, getting them ready and understanding kind of where all of this plays into part. Um, we're helping communities find funding, figuring out, are you doing a cost share program? Are you looking to the state for a loan? Um, we're also helping communities understand kind of the sampling requirements. And then something that's most near and dear to my heart is the public education. We've got a great team in house that will help develop videos and infographics to really convey what's happening and the next steps. Awesome. Thank you, Caitlin. And if you enjoyed what you heard in our conversation today, you can listen to the full conversation on BW Insights between myself and Caitlin wherever you hear your podcasts. From the entire team here at Baxter Woodman, see what's on the menu next. 